Hey everyone, Morgan here for Simple Networks and Sendoma Media and Technologies. In today's video, we are going to go over how you can spin up virtual machines in Microsoft Azure. Now this is actually a pretty easy process and that's why I'm making this video today, as I recently discovered how simple it was to do this and how useful it can be. So hopefully, this will give you some ideas of how you might be able to use these virtual machines in your own application. So to kick things off, you are going to need an account with Microsoft Azure. The sign up itself is free, but you will need a paid plan to go ahead and spin up these virtual machines. I recommend the pay as you go plan uh, for the simple fact that when you first sign up, check out all this free stuff you get. Uh, so you get 750 hours of burstable virtual machines, so you can start spinning up your first virtual machines for free. Plus you get all these extra cool or extra benefits uh, for taking advantage of the pay as you go plan. So once you have signed up for a pay-as-you-go plan and you have your instance of Microsoft Azure running, we can head over to portal.azure.com and that's where we can trigger all of our resources. In this case, you'll see virtual machines and resource groups are right at the top there, but if you don't see them there, you can click on your hamburger menu on the left and you'll find them in uh, the list on the left here as well. All right, so to kick things off, we are going to start by making a resource group. And this is essentially a container for the virtual machine to live in. So we're going to go to resource groups. And again, if you don't see it here, go ahead and click on that menu on the left. Go to resource groups. And you should see by default the Network Watcher RG resource group. That's fine. We're going to leave that one alone. We are going to actually uh, hit the create button and create a brand new resource group. Select your Azure subscription. Now, if you have the pay-as-you-go plan, uh, you should have already set this up. However, uh, if you haven't, it will prompt you to do so. Under resource group here, we're going to give it a name. It is pretty picky with names across the entire platform, as there are a lot of words that have to do with Windows and administrator and stuff like that that are already set aside. So you will have to test out a few names. But I'm going to call this Win11 Machines, because I know that that will work, as I have tested it in the past. Pick your region. I'm in US East, so that makes sense for me. And for this example, that is all we are going to configure. So we'll hit review plus create at the bottom here. And then once you see validation passed in the top left, we can click create. And just like that, you've created your resource group for your uh, virtual machines to live in. Now, I called it Win11 Machines because I'm going to be spinning up Windows 11 virtual machines. However, you can spin up a whole variety of different uh, operating systems. So you could spin up Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro. You can also do a lot of Linux-based distros and also Windows Server 2022 and I believe 2019. So you've got a lot of options. But now let's go spin up a virtual machine. So I'm going to go back to the portal page here by just clicking on Microsoft Azure. Then I'm going to click on Virtual Machines. There's none here yet, but we're going to click Create. And for this example, we're going to pick the first one in the list, Azure Virtual Machine. Create a virtual machine hosted by Azure. All right, very similar page to setting up the resource group. In this case, we're just going to specify uh, what kind of resources we want to allocate to our virtual machine. So again, pick your subscription, should auto fill in for you. Now you have to pick your resource group, put it in the Win11 machines for this example, and we're going to give it a name. Again, you may have to uh, test out some different combinations, because you'll notice, let's say I put Win11 underscore Morgan, it doesn't like that because it doesn't want to use the underscore, so I would have to do Windows 11 dash Morgan. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to give it a very, very silly name and call it Terry. So, under region, again, pick your region. Availability options. For this example, we're not going to touch any of that. Under security type, to make things easy for our first virtual machine, we're going to go with standard. And then we get to pick our image or what operating system we want to use. So here is all the U or the uh, Linux options, including Ubuntu and Red Hat, Debian, all that fun stuff. And then you've got Windows Server uh, for data centers 2022, 2019, and 2016. I did not remember that, so there you go. But And you can click see all images here if you want to get uh, even more into the weeds on that and it will take you to uh, the marketplace where you can look at all of the different options they have for you so you could spin up let's see a SQL Server 2019 on Windows Server 2019 so uh, kind of some all-in-one solutions here if you want to Ubuntu desktop which is really really uh, 
pretty cheap actually. So we're going to stick with Windows here. I'm going to go with Windows 11. Click on select. And then I want Windows 11 Pro. Keep it simple. Once that loads in, we'll see that X64 is our only option for this. Looks like it didn't quite take there, so I'm going to select it again, Windows 11 Pro. There we go. Size, you can go ahead and pick what you want or what you're going to need for your virtual machine. In my case, I am going to go to see all sizes, and I'm just going to pick something with a few more cores, because I know from experience that the two core 8 gig of RAM version is going to be pretty slow. So let's see, virtual CPUs, let's get four CPUs going here. So I'm going to click this one and click select. Now you'll see it's going to load the price in there, 121.18 a month. That is if, if you're on the pay-as-you-go plan, that's if you leave the virtual machine running 24-7. So what you can do with these virtual machines is you can stop the virtual machine or just power it off. Um, and once you do that, it's no longer racking up those charges, which is really nice. You do have to keep in mind, though, that you are going to lose access to whatever services you have running on that virtual machine. So it's up to you to weigh this cost and say, is it worth 120 bucks a month for me for this virtual machine, depending on how much I'm going to use it, or should I just go buy bare metal and host this myself, which may or may not be an option for you. So we'll continue down with the administrator account. You can't call it administrator. It doesn't like that. It's part of the reserved words, like I mentioned before. So I'm going to give it a, an account name of just Morgan for this example. And LastPass is going to be the death of me, I swear. It's great when you need it, but now it's just going to keep shooting up things that I have to blur out and post. <laughs> for the password, I'm just going to give it a password. It does require a fairly long password. And you do have to meet some requirements, such as having a special character and a capital in there. Confirm the password one more time. There's that. We're going to leave the inborn, inbound port rules uh, the same, because we are going to use remote desktop uh, to be accessing this virtual machine. Now, I do have to warn you, that's not the most secure way to do this, and they're going to warn you as well that it's just for testing purposes. But that's all we're doing here is for testing, so we'll leave that alone. Under licensing, you do have to confirm that you are, in fact, a holder of an eligible Windows license uh, with multi-tenant hosting rights. I'm going to leave that up to you whether you decide to check that or not. I would say that if you are not putting this into production and you're just learning and testing and trying things out, not to worry about it. But if you're going to put this into production um, and you, you're going to want to make sure you're up with the terms and service, so you're going to need to make sure you have that license. In this case, we're just testing and learning, so I'm going to hit review and create. Not now, last pass, not now. So once you have validation passed up here, it's going to give you a, a reminder of your subscription. So it's going to be about 16 cents per hour to run this virtual machine. Once you're all good with that and you've looked over your uh, the basics here, including that you have a premium SSD, very nice, uh, you can go ahead and click Create. Now the actual deployment of the machine will take a little while. Take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, depending on which machine you chose. So once mine's done deploying, we'll come right back. All right, so once your screen looks like this, you've got a nice green check mark and it says your deployment is complete. Then guess what? Your deployment is complete. Your virtual machine is ready to go. So what we can do is we'll go back to our Microsoft Azure icon here, go back to the main portal, and we'll click on Virtual Machines. And there's Terry, our Windows 11 machine. So go ahead and click on your new machine. And in the case of Windows, it's going to give you all the information you need to get started. So because we're using Windows, we're going to connect with the remote desktop protocol. And you'll see it gives us the public IP right here. But the coolest thing about this is, especially um, if you're going to be spinning up a lot of Windows stuff, is it creates the remote desktop protocol uh, profile for you. So if you go up to here and click Connect, Not only does it give you your public IP, but under most common here, you can just select native remote desktop protocol and download the RDP file already pre-programmed right from there. 
which I just think is awesome. It makes it so easy to get these machines up and running and start testing stuff, start playing around in your sandbox environment, whatever you're going to do with it. So once you see that you've got all green check marks here, we can go ahead and download the RDP file. And it's 96 bytes real quick. So what I'll do is I'll actually just drag that onto my desktop here. I'll get rid of OBS so it doesn't show, um, do that tunnel thing. <laughs> so we'll grab uh, the remote desktop protocol file here. I'm just going to drag it right onto the desktop, right over the headlight of the Mustang there. Put that down. And now if I double click on Terry, I'll say don't ask me again, hit connect, put in that username and password we set up before, the really long password, hit yes, and check that out. We are now looking at the desktop of our cloud virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. So we're going to go through the Windows 11 setup here. And here is our remote desktop, Windows 11 desktop. That's pretty sweet, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and see what it kind of thinks that it's running on. So I'm going to go to Task Manager here. You know, it's actually not too bad. The latency is not too bad. A little choppy on the graphics, but that's to be expected with RDP. So if we go to Performance here, let's see what it thinks it's running. So with the four core version, it sees itself as having a Xenon Platinum 8272 CL CPU. And let's see what that gets us. That's four cores, one socket. We've got 16 gigs of RAM and Ethernet connection with the Hyper-V network adapter. Now let me just show you, you do get gigabit speeds with this thing, which I think is pretty good. It's even fast enough for Edge to annoy the living crap out of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. So let's go ahead and go to speedtest.net. It does see that it's Microsoft Azure connected, and it's going to go to Fairfax, Virginia there. Look at that. That's actually close to, are we going to hit 2 gigabit? Look at that. I lied. It's even better. So with this version, you are getting close to 2 gigabit. Uh, for the download, let's see what we get for upload. Check that out. That's about gigabit for upload. So it is going to depend on the image you selected. I created a two core, eight gig version of this machine a, a few hours ago, and it got about gigabit up and down. So this one does get a little bit better on the download. But as you can see, you could, uh, you could get quite a bit of power out of one of these virtual machines, depending on what you want to do with it and how much you're willing to pay for it. Pretty sweet. There's lots of applications for something like this. So we're going to disconnect here and get back to the site. So I do want to show you how you can turn it off real quick to stop those charges. If at some point you don't want to get rid of it, um, but you don't need it running right now, so you can go to Virtual Machines, click on Terry, and then you can just hit Stop here. Do you want to stop Terry? Yes, I do. So it's going, again, it's going to take a few minutes to actually stop the virtual machine. But once you stop it, the service isn't running. Those charges aren't racking up on the pay-as-you-go plan. So pretty cool, and I hope this tip is useful for you, or at least interesting. If you want to hire me for technology consulting, you can go ahead and go to SendomaMediaTech.com. I'll leave the link in the description. I do offer online consultations in case you're not in my area. We do 30 minutes for 25 bucks and 50 bucks for an hour. Uh, you can also go and check out our services. And if you want to book me, you're local to the Rochester, New York area, you can go ahead and hit, hit contact over here. Just fill out that contact form. I'll get an email and I'll reach out to you as soon as possible. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. You can leave some comments down below on whether you liked the video, if you want to see more videos like this, or if you just have any questions in general. Uh, other than that, subscribe if you want to. Don't if you don't. And have a great rest of your day.